I'm what's known as a roadie. Proud to have been in this industry for 55 years, 7,000 shows and 650 acts and 20 years of big day outs of six cities a year and 120 cities in total. From ACDC to ZZ Top, it's a great journey. It's something to undertake. Hi, it's Howard Freeman with Tune Up for a Support Act. <laughs> The most amazing thing is watching the house lights go down on a major event with 50 or 60,000 people and knowing that you've worked your ass off to the point of exhaustion, pain and insanity and tears. It's, it's about delivering to the best possible level for the artist you're representing or the show you're putting together every time on time, in any condition, under any pressure situation. You've never seen a show cancelled because the crew were late. It's never happened and it never will be. So the pressures are relentless. You'd finish your gig and you would, you would have an hour to, to play before you went to bed, before you had to get up and drive somewhere and do it again. So in that hour, you would go as hard as you could, as fast as you could, You'd start drinking triple so you wouldn't have to walk back to the bar to buy another one. That was how it went. Within your exhaustion, both physical and mental, you would fall asleep for the potential three to five hours before you had to get up and do it again and possibly get up and do a line of speed to get back in the rig, to drive it down the road, to unload the shit again in some dump with stairs and nobody fucking cared who you were or what you were, and you're fighting with people the whole way, that's the way you dealt with it. And my headspace? Well, I always had to ignore my headspace to a point because I was looking after other people. That was my job, was to keep the team together that I built. It just became part of your nature to absorb the bullets you took. You never went to have them removed. So people didn't ask for help. Um, it only became obvious when people started suiciding at a reasonable rate or self-harming or disappearing and, and becoming reclusive that uh, it was decided to go, to go and source some avenues of help for these people. You know, I've had moments where I wanted the neck myself and not too recently I had another one. But you get over that because you've still got something you've got to achieve. Four years ago, I got involved with an organisation called ARCA, which I was president of and moved on from that to develop crew care. The, the amount of interaction and looking after people, there's, there's landlines. You can pick up a phone and talk about your problem. You're not talking to somebody that doesn't know about your industry. Regarding my own mental health and taking control of myself through the whole journey, a person that's physically well will be mentally strong. I actually went from snorting bags to punching them. And what's more satisfying? We're now sitting in a place called Fit Life in Country Gully near where I live and it's run by a guy called Tommy Hopkins who's an ex-lighting guy who's just amazingly given space to anybody that's a member of crew care, old roadies to come in and train for nothing. Howard wanted to buy the joint when he came in. He's here several times a week just participating in class. I think he's loving it. That when I'm capable, I love to hit the bag or be pushed to above my limit. And I know when I was on the road with bands, um, you know, the pressure you're under and, and the bad habits you get into. And if only I had have allocated some time in my day for some sort of you know, my own mental well-being and some form of gentle exercise, however easy it was, I, I think I, I would have been, it would have been far beneficial for me than trying to do all those years and all that grind without, without thinking about that stuff at all. So go to support it, go to all these places that can give you a hand, give you a lift, give you direction. Don't think you're on your own, because you never are. We are family, we're there for you.